Welcome to Thunder Nerds. I'm Brian Hinton. And I am Frederick Philip Von Weiss. And thank you for consuming the Thunder Nerds, a conversation with the people behind the technology that love what they do. And do tech good. Ha! Let's get hot in here. So, well, hey, it? Brian, how are you doing, man? I am fantastic. Uh, I uh, have a really long day, though. I uh, just ended at 7.10, my last meeting, 7.10 p.m. How are you doing? I'm pretty good, and I'll tell you why, Brian, because on uh, a, a few episodes ago, we mentioned a on our uh, Spotlight segment of our show a little thing about uh, things that you wanted from your childhood. And when I came into the office the other day, and the thing that I wanted was Boss Hordak from He-Man. And when I came into my office the other day, there was a little box that said, because I love you. And there was this Buzzsaw Hordak and I got it from Brian. So I'm pretty happy. Thank you, Brian. Love you, brother. Love you too, man. Got my Buzzsaw Hordak. Hey, <laughs> um, just a quick, before we get to our guest, if you like the show, love the show, yes. just find Brian Hiss Hinton aggressively adorable. Go to iTunes, subscribe, Throw us a few stars. Just make it rain stars. If cheese. you want to go to uh, the old YouTubes, that'd be great. Subscribe to the show. Show you love and support. We would honestly and authentically appreciate it. So thank you for doing that. Yes, yes. So without any and, further ado. And, uh, I want to add another thing, too. We're going to be checking the reviews, and and it, we'll, uh, we'll pick one. We should pick one, Frederick, and let's read a review. We're going to read one review yeah. next week right at the start of the show. So make sure you get your reviews in now. We'd love to hear them. Today on the show, we are super excited because we have an incredibly special guest that I'm so um, uh, enthusiastic to uh, speak to. I forget how the song goes that you sang, uh, Alyssa, but I'll get into that. <laughs> I'm alive, awake, alert, enthusiastic. Oh, and my gosh. Uh, we're, we're bringing that to the show. Uh -oh. bringing it. So we have, I'm going to read this so I have it correctly. We have, you, you got this, Hordak? We have <laughs> Angular developer, advocate for Kendo UI, not the sword fighting Kendo, Google developer expert, Alyssa Nichol. Welcome to the show. Welcome. Howdy. So glad to be here. I love the He-Man love that's going around. God, He-Man love. <laughs> Great to have you. I, I'm a big fan. I, I've been watching uh, uh, your YouTube videos I like it. Thank you. I know. I'm like really impressed with how. Also, how did you know how to say my name right? I'm like well, it's super... a it's a it's a secret that I have with every guest. What I do is I watch them on their videos and they say their name, and then I know how to say their name. You are Don't tell so everybody it's a cool. trade secret. You are seriously so cool that it's like literally I don't. I cannot remember the last person who said it right. Thank you. I, mean, I, I just want to say, with, with all seriousness, we do a lot of research on this show, and we oh, yeah. really want to get to know our guests. We don't just want to have people on because they have some kind of name. We're not about that. You we could really want to stalk. <laughs> I don't want to say we stalk you, but you know, we really do. we've been to your house. It's amazing. But we really want to know our guests, and we want the same kind of takeaways that we're going to provide our audience. We we also want to learn. I want to learn from you, and I'm really excited to ask you a bunch of questions about some of the learnings that I found, uh, that I consumed, and I digested, and I want to get your take on them. Yeah, yeah like, like you have a puppy named Beef. I do, I do. Which reminds me of Alton Brown's meatloaf. Wait. Every episode he brings us up of Alton Brown. He has a meatloaf fetish. <laughs> uh, I have a I have an obsession with the Alton Brown. One day he will hear this and he'll be like, "Come to me, I will make you something." He even Wait. forced me to eat it once. Wait. I was like, "I'm not going to eat this meatloaf." He and loved it. Like, you I made it this. and brought I, some in for him. Alton I heart emoji did. He's a I'll genius. Admit it. So yeah. why wouldn't this meatloaf be awesome? Exactly. Yeah, okay, definitely. No, Barnaby. He's sitting over there, and his name's Barnaby. And which okay. we have um, we have but, lots of nephews, but we have one niece, and she could not pronounce Barnaby. She said Barnaby. Oh, oh, I love that. And so it just got shortened to beef, and now he's my juicy wiener. I have <laughs> I have he's a story so like that with my cat who I named Wishbone, which if anyone knows that, it's this named is after the dog, yes. <laughs> because I thought it was funny that I named the cat Wishbone. But then my family all kept calling him Little Kitty. 
And he never listened to his name. He is just it became little kitty. I'm like, what really, guys? <laughs> he's like his little tag says wishbone, and like he never comes to it. That's no, no never. <laughs> oh, he, yeah, he is. He's long gone. Bless his heart. 23 oh, years old though. 23 years old. That's a long life for a cat. So wow, but, yeah. But so now you just call him Beef. Yes, now he is just Beef, and. Uh, that's a that's we actually replaced my bio sentence because uh, like a month ago I lost gummy so oh, I feel sorry, I feel for a wishbone in that loss I, and anybody who's lost any uh, like fur babies I send out love because I don't know man I was just like <laughs> <It's hard. laughs> randomly be like you know coding or you know just like shopping and then all of a sudden it just hit me and I was just, well, silliest thing I felt so stupid but I was just like wow like it just yeah, it's part not of silly. my we just I lost know, our, our little guy, Jerome, and he's uh, he was 17. He's a little chihuahua, and oh. uh, I, I, I honestly I miss the fuck out of that guy. Excuse my language every day, and um, yeah, it's it's tough. Why gummy? Uh, she had no teeth when we adopted her. <laughs> we, oh. we, we've only ever adopted old persnickety dogs, and good yeah, for you. <laughs> gummy is this part. She was this part chihuahua, uh, part uh, like Italian greyhound, and she had no teeth. Oh, so I would always mix. like open stage with like you know like yeah, I'm an Angular developer expert, and I have a toothless dog named Gummy. And so it's such a like you always you never think about like when you put things in your bio, and then like all of a sudden that's different, and like it changes everywhere, like all over the internet. You're just like. Oh God! Like God forbid, I have to change my name oh. or something. It would and every exactly. time, oh, that's so sexy. And every time you have to be like, you have to change it every one. Oh, I, know. I was so, like, what so was sorry. I thinking? Yeah. Uh, but no, th I really do appreciate like um, the effort that you guys go into to <laughs> like look into your panelists and even say their names right. So I think that's super cool. It shows how much you care. So Thank thanks. You. Really appreciate that. <laughs> do you, would you mind if we start off with a little bit of context about uh, where you're from? and where you're at now. So you have an association with Florida, right? I do, yeah. So I recently left Florida for Oklahoma, but we lived there for me and my husband. He's also a web developer. He got me into web development. And we lived there. He was there for 10 years. I was there for eight. So it was home. Like Orlando was home for a very, like we just got rooted there and uh, we both got remote jobs. So we're both remote like devs. I know, right? <laughs> and we were like, oh, you know, we, we only see family at Christmas time. They're all, both of our families here. So we're like, I guess it's a good opportunity while one of us isn't in an office to be close to them. But our town here in Oklahoma doesn't even have a coffee shop. So going from like Orlando where we had, you know, like our uh, Disney passes and <laughs> the ocean, like an hour <laughs> drive away, going from like that to like, I make my own coffee now, like a plebe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, although no, it those city. Uh, how does this work? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, why? Where's my Uber Eats? <laughs> you hungry. no, you joke, but we take that crap for granted, you guys. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I Especially hear you. with like Brian's, like yeah, I got out of a meeting at seven o'clock. Like when days like that, and then you have to like go cook, like. I'm oh. I'm I'm just having a cocktail for dinner. So. <laughs> Liquid deliciousness. Oh, I love it. Add a so piece you're of cheese. From Oklahoma, then. Yes, originally, and yes. I shy away from the country music. Anytime I hear it, I'm like, <laughs> like. What about, what about like <laughs> folk bluegrass? Do you like that? Uh, it's cool. It's cool. I grew up on like like punk rock, so I like. So I'm, like not have that from you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like hardcore emo. I had like, buzz yeah, like, hair. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! I want, I want to hear some bands. <laughs> hardcore emo, um, punk rock. Let's hear it. I don't like it was super you're gonna you're gonna laugh like nope boxcar no. racer blink 182 like um oh my goodness i am really there's angels and airwaves that was one of no my effects. favorites uh-huh yeah no effects. MCX, no effects yeah no i like i was super super nerd like i don't even does emo count as nerd I don't no, know. No. No. Not, no. <laughs> I mean, I feel like you could be an emo nerd. I mean, why can't you be an emo nerd? Well, yeah, I guess you could be anything. You could be a rap nerd. You could be yeah. an R&B nerd. Sure. What, what, what were you guys' music tastes, though? Like, where'd you come from? I, I was a big screamo and rap guy and goth guy. Mm -hmm. So I was in all kinds of bands forever growing up. Like, I was in goth bands. I was in emo oh, bands. I was in rap like bands. You were, making the music. Yeah, I was making the music. But I was into the music, too, so which compelled me to be the music. I've always been a 
lead singer, screamer, rapper kind of guy. Oh, that's awesome. I what? grew up listening to uh, like old, old crap because my parents had jukeboxes. So it was like, <laughs> well, I'm not crap. I enjoyed it. It's like, you know, like, uh, you know, the song, the birds and the bees, the flowers and the trees, like, <gasps> like that. No, like 40, you grew 45. up with that? Yeah, because yes. my, my, my parents have jukeboxes full of like 45 records. So that's what constantly be playing in the background. Be playing like really like fridge size jukeboxes? Yeah, yeah, legit. 40, 45s, playing 45s. And, and I, so I've kind of progressed to that. Now I'm like Grateful Dead and Folk and Bluegrass and, you know, yeah. that type of stuff. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, and I and I liked a lot, of, you know, a lot of what was you know popular in the, you know the '90s. Obviously, I liked you know the Green Day, Weezer, Nirvana. You know, mm-hmm. yeah, you, you can't grow up in that era and not enjoy it. Oh, of course, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did you ever do any bands? Uh, I, I no. I mean, I I can sing, and I did Let's with the choir, but. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go ahead. Oh, are we and going to for your listening pleasure, everyone, <clears throat> let's clear the room and are we doing the stage? Oh, oh my Ryan, god! Play the Does music. Does he have a ukulele? Was yeah, that I'm not, a ukulele? Yeah. I'm yeah. Not playing. Ryan, go ahead and okay. No, let's hear solo and go. I'm alive, awake, alert, enthusiastic. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I just had to bring that one up because that wasn't actually Alyssa. That was a Sam. I have a friend oh. whose name's Bonnie. That she came up on stage with you. Yeah. And she has a daughter who she actually bribed to learn how to code. And she said, if you learn how to code this summer, I will buy you a laptop. And so her daughter learned Angular and then she's now like speaking at conferences <laughs> and wow. teaching. Yeah. She's like an NGRX talk uh, or it was like marbles testing like at the last conference I saw her at and she's 16. Uh, so, I yeah. love her mother. <laughs> what a great I woman. know, right? I'm like, I, lo- I love that, but I'm all like, I'm also like, man, I wish I had had this stuff when I was that age. I know, I know right? Like, all this stuff wasn't there. There was no, like, we grew up, I, like, I built the all first this cool stuff to do. I was the first, this is going to make nerd me out big time, but I was the founding member of the internet club for my high school. I built the the high school's (laughs) first website. I built the first website for the high school. That's awesome. So cool. You were the founding member of the internet club. Yeah. yeah. I would kill for a picture of this club. (laughs) Oh my God, right? I would put that on my LinkedIn. Actually, we're all like, uh, I was probably the nerdiest looking of the bunch. That's so <laughs> weird. What is the price? Shut up. <laughs> I would have not have thought that. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Wait, do you go by Frederick or Fred? Uh, Frederick. But you could Frederick. call me Jebediah if you like. <laughs> Oh, so yeah, um, that was actually a Sam, a Sam original. She she was like, you need to wake up your audience. I was like, tell me how, Sam. And so she came up on stage and did that song with me. So I, I was, love that. And I love the backstory now that I understand that a little bit more. Yeah, uh, <laughs> they actually did it with us. I was very like, oh, they, they, like, the audience was all about it. They stood up. They, when stood, you up, they stood up and did it. And I was just, it's funny because I've been traveling. I put like in the docs for this show, I put my schedule for the year because I've been traveling like crazy to conferences. And it's funny, the differences. I don't know if you guys have done any speaking in other countries, but like the differences between audiences and like the receptiveness of certain types of things, whether it be like jokes or just like energy or getting even like emotions from like audience members. Complete silence. Yeah, I know. It's something I think we take for granted. Um, At least that's what I've noticed from my travels lately is that certain audiences are very stoic and other audiences are like actually into it. So for that one, at least I was super grateful because people actually got up and did the nerdy wake up dance with me. Where so were you was... when you discovered the more the uh, reserved, we'll call it audience? Where where were you? What was that? <laughs> uh, so not the, US, not the US. Uh, so uh, like in, I think like Poland and Finland, both of those audiences were more reserved. Um, I'm trying to think of. What about, uh, what about Montreal? I feel like Montreal weather, a little cold. Mont- <laughs> Montreal was medium, medium. Really? It was, yeah, it was a little bit closer, but they also were, I think uh, me and my husband have a theory. He's like, I wonder if it has to do with like, 
like um, language barriers and like cultural just like things that come with culture and how like it's easier for us like like make a cultural meme and then be like oh yeah that was funny versus like actually having to you know this is your not your first language but your second language so like you're doing this like translating bit in your head or like yeah. even just processing right and so I think um, I think it's just a language barrier. Like they don't get the joke immediately. Which, right. Well, which, or like, well, the, in, yeah. Was it Finland? I think it was Finland. They came up to me afterwards and they're like, oh, this was such a good talk. Thank you for that. And I'm like, really? Like, cause in, when I was like, you know, I'd say a joke or I'd smile and I just, it was like, like straight up, like nothing on the faces. And so I was just, I think I've really taken for granted being able to get feedback it would be great if you was like you know such a great talk and you were so funny even say it with a straight face he's like <laughs> and then everyone after no one clapped they just nodded in the audience <laughs> or if they just stood there with their arms crossed and were like applause <laughs> Applause, applause. I had this dude come up to me after a talk and he was uh, Russian and he said, I loved your talk. I thought you had some really good ideas. Um, he goes, I, I'm not. That's not how he said it. Do it in a Russian <laughs> accent. He goes, I'm like, oh, no, I'm going to fight you. He goes, <laughs> he's like, I, I'm nothing like the guys, uh, the other guys at my company who were, I guess they were in the first row. And I was like, what do you mean nothing like them? And he's like, oh, they just disagree with like your ideas. And I'm like, well, which what? ideas? Like, yeah, like, let's talk Humor. about it. Humor. And he, goes, he literally is like, just, you know, like the idea that you're a woman developer. And I was like, Whoa. what? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> wow. I was right. like, I don't know how to respond to that. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wonder. I feel like I haven't actually met. Um, I don't. We work with some Ukrainian and Russian developers, and I think I haven't met a single woman actually. Now that I think about it, I yeah, you, you know what? I didn't, didn't think that was like that over there. I, you know, you tend to think of more, um, I don't know, different kind of countries, but I, I, I really didn't associate Russia with with that. Well, um, and it could have just been, you know, their their group. Even I yeah, just okay, am super enough. super shocked by just meeting people, even still today that think things like that because i was super naive i was like oh we're over that like us is like an industry like oh, no, we're exactly a yeah civil, like a Whoa. civilization right Whoa. i was like oh no we're <laughs> so <laughs> over that definitely definitely not and a lot of what you're talking about sounds a lot like you know interaction with people you know could say psychology <laughs> i think <laughs> that you have a bachelor in psychology i do <laughs> i do oh you guys are so funny <laughs> <laughs> no so i when i went to school i went to ou um go sooners and <laughs> go no, sooners. I, yeah boomer sooners i am like not a sports ball fan but because i'm like it's my alma mater i have to be so when people try to talk to football i'm like i just kind of glaze over i can't sports ball like i just can't talk sports, sports. <laughs> just, I hear you. so anyways yeah so i went to ou and i got my bachelor's in psychology and i was actually going for like clinical studies and i was going like right after that going to go into my master's and then my doctorate and um my fiance now husband at the time was going to full cell um in mm -hmm. florida and he was going for web dev and design and so he actually started teaching me stuff while i was in college for psychology and i was like wow this is really cool and so when it came time to pick a school for my like master's and doctorate i was like do i really love this and at the time <laughs> i know at the time i was kind of depressed because um <laughs> i oh, funny, right? depressed psychologist. oh i was i was because i got into psychology <gasps> with the idea of That'd be perfect let's heal schizophrenia right like i yeah. literally was like let's do it like what you know and like every single <laughs> professor that i met was like you're insane like that's not gonna happen and it just wasn't the attitude it was very much like just not the attitude healing things it's like no these are the defined things that we know of and these are the defined medications that we know of and, and it was just like end of story and i was just like okay no creativity no thinking outside the box like it was so um when i started 
programming, which was just literally hacking away with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Like it wasn't anything big. I, I fell freaking in love like hard. And so I was like, you know what? I want to do this too. So I went to full sell and I got another bachelor's degree. Good Lord. How many do you need? And I found, I think I use, I don't know. People have asked me like if it was a waste of time. And I think I learned valuable lessons about like life during school. Like, because I was, you know, like, how do you pay for like car insurance? And you know what I mean? Like there's all these like things that I learned or like, how do you, I don't know. There's just like life lessons that I learned through it. But I think all in all, a lot of my people skills were like given to me by like God or my parents or my genes. I don't know. And not, <laughs> right the, and not, and not the psych degree. You so. shall have people skills. <laughs> there you <on>. go. <laughs> Okay. I bestow this upon you, you. <laughs> you guys laugh, but I've talked to so many of my nerd friends who are just like, oh, like even one of like one her <laughs> she works friends. yeah nerd friends like she works for Google and she's bloody brilliant programmer and she was talking to me and we were having dinner and she's like, I just wish like I could you know have like the presence on stage and like the comfort that you do and I was like, I would give it up in a heartbeat for your logic skills, like any day. So like when I say people skills, I'm like, it's actually like a tangible measurable thing that I feel like, <laughs> like I've seen so many of my friends that they're, it's like lower on the people skills that like, you know, their, their dev skills are like through the yeah. roof. <laughs> but, but I think people skills is very uh, underrated a lot because yeah, and like I've read numerous times uh, in interview, like people talking about their interviews, how like that's not even addressed. Like how really? well you think yeah. so? I think it's really not like even, uh, mm. um, yeah, I've, it's not like I feel like it's more address of what frameworks you know, what what code you um, you oh, know, what code skills with. are like, uh, as opposed to like how well do you talk and communicate with others? I feel well, like I, they think that will just come across naturally, like during the interview, or how they hope that will. Do right? they, uh, <laughs> you don't think? Do that. they? I don't really think they do. I mean, they do ask that question: If you were an animal, what would you be? So maybe that's the. <laughs> Maybe that's where they get that. It depends what you're going for. If you're going just for a straight development development position where you're going to be a butt in a chair, uh, whether that's yeah. locally or remote, sure, yeah. that's one thing. But if you're going to be some kind of advocate, then there's a different conversation to be had. Mm. Have you read the book or seen the book Cracking the Coding Interview? Uh, it goes through like, a, it, yeah. yeah, it goes through a bunch of different like LinkedIn or Google or like other like Facebook of interviewing processes. And, but then at the end, it's like training you for interviewing for big tech companies. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> there are like chapters on like, um, like one of them was like how to answer. Uh, so tell me about yourself. Like it, it was a whole chapter on how to answer that question. There's like a systematic, like first you need to start like this and then you summarize this. And I was like, there's actually answers to these things. <laughs> so you, you start with your favorite cocktail. What's the best takeaway you got from that? My, the best takeaway got, that I got from that entire book was yeah. that because it was split down the middle between because I was I was studying it for the technical part. And I was like, oh, my goodness, there are people who study to know how to answer questions like tell me about yourself because that's hard for them. Like, so that's my takeaway was what like- was the answer? Uh, oh, you actually want to know. No, it was super <laughs> like, it was like, think about um, like your career in reverse and you need to summarize it and be super brief. And then as the conversation mm. continues, you can go into more detail was like the summary of that chapter. But it was hmm. super that's like- good. I think for you though, it's probably a little bit easier because you are a, and correct me if I'm wrong, you seem to be a natural- extroverted person not only in the way of you recharge in a group of people but you also have the people skills appended to that as well like yeah. you were a very natural feel it's, good kind so of person hilarious. She's like i fooled you <laughs> no, i am i am hilariously enough i'm actually classified as an introvert because what? i i'm not energized by groups of people i uh oh, okay well there you go yeah. So, but i this is easy for me no doubt so that checkbox but as far as like after for instance after a conference i literally go and sit in a hotel room and like play video games like and just kind of like zone out for a bit because i just and so like it just takes so much out of me not even being on stage but just talking to people afterwards and interacting yeah. i'm like where's yeah. my closet <laughs> I, I, i'm also an extroverted introvert is what i like to coin oh, it oh yeah yeah so where do you find your ability to um have that extroverted personality or people skills or whatever you want to call it so soft skills where does that come from? Did you always have that or did you learn that from somewhere? 
Uh, I, I think I've always had a bit of it and then I've cultivated as I realized that it's not just black and white as far as tech, the tech industry goes. Um, like you're saying there are just developers, but then there <laughs> were other roles that I thought were super appealing and it's, I don't know, I, it's easier for me to do this stuff. Um, and so that's honestly one of the reasons that I push myself to the like right now I'm like diving deep into like NGRX and um, like RxJS and like really learning that stuff. And I love when I, I push myself on those things because that stuff is super challenging for me. And so <laughs> it's like, uh, OK, so my day job's easy. So I need to make, you know, my nightlife hard. <laughs> Well, but. I like to you talk about the way that you, um, in one of the videos I watched that you had talking about diversifying your ego, your self-identification, uh, the way you uh, put some of your eggs into the basket of scuba diving. That's something you really enjoy. You put your time into it. You find it um, very uh, uh, invigorating, a way to recharge, and you form um, relationships with that community. Yeah, and I, I think that what you're specifically talking about, it came from my talk where I dive into like the dangers of like burnout. And yeah, the talk way, with uh, the day you met Steve. Yes, yeah. And that was super startling to me um, when I realized that because it was like I was researching this Dr. Jerry and she has these patients that um, like were burned out in their jobs and like they all got out into like better jobs, better situations. Some were like much worse than others, but 10% um, of her patients actually developed cancer. And so when I like heard that statistic, I was just like, oh, like, and I get that it's correlation, obviously not a causation, but that's one of the reasons that um, the day I met Steve was because <laughs> was such a, like, I have to do this talk because I couldn't realize that. And it all happened from actually meeting a developer that was like, could not care less like absolutely and I was totally mortified to realize that people like this exist again I think this goes back to the super because you know I, I thought us as a civilization was over like the woman thing like I was just like oh yeah, yeah. like that's not a I I thought like all developers care Cared, yeah <laughs> I don't. Did you guys ever you're, have you're a wrong. moment like that where you're like, <laughs> absolutely, your worldview it, 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 it's that it's that thing when you were a kid and you realize that your parents might not know everything. It's so when you <laughs> first get into this industry, you just think, well, man, everybody's so positive. Everybody wants to do so many different things, I, uh, and then I, you end up working with that one person that's like, nope, sorry, that's the way it is. I could do that, but that. sorry, that's the way it is. I've never it's felt just that. like what. You've never felt it, Brian? No, I I consistently feel that the industry is just still really screwed up. Like the like mm -hmm. equality between um, you know minorities uh, between the sexes, just it's not there. It's nowhere near there. Oh, um, I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking yeah. about the people that care. But yeah, oh, absolutely. yeah. I I mean, I think that there are groups of people that are um, like just astounding and amazing. Our, our you know present guests included in that, and just go out of their way to help people um, and just are out there. And, and you know, those people are amazing, but there's a huge group of people that exact opposite, that they're like, no, this is mine. I'm not sharing it. Do you think I was just like blessedly yeah. sheltered? You were. Oh, okay. Because I'm like, why? Like, people would tell me stories. And I'm like, that can't be happening. Since you asked, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I think we should probably dive into this a little bit and we'll dive into your video a little bit because this is such a the burnout subject is such a good uh, subject to uh, provide help for for uh, certain uh, groups of people because yeah, it, it depends where you came from. If you came from that startup life or an agency life rather than um, maybe an in-house where you're you know just working on that one project, you could see it develop and you could make adjustments oh. as you go where the agency lifestyle is like, do it, get it out the door. It's it's kind of like the army of um, development or design, if if you will, at the beginning. See, I feel like that's I I felt I got um, I, I just as burn. I think you get equal burnout in the, in either category. Mm -hmm. I feel it's just a different type. I feel Depends like where you work, I guess. Yeah. Uh, no, no. <laughs> I mean, yeah. maybe yes, yes, true. I'm sure that yes, it depends where you work. But agencies burnout is they push you to like your breaking point as far as just the amount of work in general that you're doing. 
while there's an entirely different uh, corporate stress that exists in like a centralized corporation where like we're just working on this one project. You you get it, it's it different. It's just different types of stress. I could speak for my own um, experience where when I've worked at agencies, it's that yeah. super quick, get things out the door. Oh, is it good? I don't care. Ship it. Well, what about this? Ah, yeah, yeah, that's, that's great. Stressful. Ship it. And it's yeah. so stressful it <laughs> when you see some things go out the door and you're like, oh, I want to dot the I's. I want to dot the I's. No crossing the I's, no dot in the T's. That's not yeah. how we do it. Why don't we do it that way? Yeah, exactly. Have and, you ever had it happen where they were like, we need you to make a POC and it's just going to be proof of concept. It's not going to go into production. <laughs> and they're legitimately like a month later, they're like, this needs to be live tomorrow. Oh, yeah. And you're uh, like, but this entire architecture is not even meant to be live tomorrow. I had an exact scenario <laughs> where so it was designed in grayscale that they <laughs> built the grayscale version and launched the grayscale version. I was like, wait, no. why is that live? <laughs> no, they did not. They did. Oh, yes. I've my, been there too. I've been there like five times. My, I told this to my husband and he, he was like, did you know that we actually have something live right now around the world in hotels around the world and they call it the POC app because it was a proof of concept and I named it proof of concept and they published it as a POC app. And they're like, like that they, great. These, these hotel staff will be like, oh yeah, I need to get into that PC, POC app. Like, and they're just like, do you even know? Like, it was just, it's still like years later. And What's I'm like, that show on HBO with the, 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 the guys that built that thing? Oh, um, uh, Silicon Valley. Is that what Silicon is? Valley. They had this yeah. great episode. Yeah. I don't know if you saw it or not, but um, <laughs> they build the guys like I don't know. Why don't you build a thing that's called the, the the this box, and then you take that box and we'll put it in a server closet somewhere and blah blah blah. And he's just saying it so sarcastically, and the the salespeople are like, hmm, that's a great idea. And then the <laughs> next episode, you see it and they're selling it, <laughs> and it does literally nothing. It has no connection to nothing. And it's just a box. And it's like the <laughs> biggest seller they have. I was so naive because that was my first uh, my first dev great. job. And they were like, you know, just make this proof of concept for us. And so I was like, cool, awesome. And so whenever they did ship it, and I, I was horrified. And I, I like apparently started talking to people. And they're like, yeah, this is like, it happens every day. And I'm like, but why does it happen every day? <laughs> The thing that bothers me that I've experienced in, in numerous places I've worked is that they do that and they're like, okay, well, you know, it's like that right now, but we'll iterate on it. We'll come back to and fix it. And you know, never time, never budget. Nope. We're not yeah. doing that. Yeah. Yeah. So a friend of mine was like, I actually secretly on the DL build in time now when I am creating proof of concepts to make it the right way because I know it's going to be shipped. That's probably <laughs> when he's really making smart. estimates. Like you that. know, I wanted to ask you, um, since we're talking about the subject, what do you find some good uh, tools that people could employ to avoid burnout? I mean, some of the things I could think of is make sure that you treat your job as a partnership. And I mean that you don't treat it as, oh, I work there, but actually have some kind of ownership of what you do and think about it as, you work for them, but they also work for you as far as, you know, they're representing your work and, and have that kind of mindset. And if you are not comfortable with your partnership, well, then maybe you either need to bring it up or it's time to disengage. Yeah, no, because there's a lot of times where it's, you know, you don't have ownership and you don't have any control and you just feel like a cog in the machine and i think that's definitely like a big like red flag of like hey something's not optimal here and uh, especially uh, if that continues for years that's when it gets dangerous um because it's it can affect not only like your mental health but also your physical health which is mind blowing but um i think not just like it's really hard people are really bad at uh temperature checks and like seeing, mm. you know what I mean? Like just being like self yeah. oh, self aware. God, yeah. <laughs> it's like um, it's it's how like obesity or depression or you know like the, all these things like or even addiction um they they don't happen overnight. It's like this slow like frog boiling in water, and it's I mean, the same thing with burnout. I woke up with it. <laughs> <laughs> A frog boiling in water. So oh yeah, you've never heard that 
the like a frog will yeah. let yeah, yeah. boil to death because it's slowly. Oh, you've heard this, or you mm-hmm. haven't? Heard? I, okay, I, I, I was I've like, heard it. Yeah. Okay, I like. Do I? Oh my gosh, you're gonna make me mansplain. Tell us in detail. <laughs> mansplain. So what's a frog? No. <laughs> um but no i think like you were saying like the eggs in the basket um not putting all of your your eggs in your work basket um is super super helpful to avoid that because i know sometimes you have to have a job and yeah. finding a new job can be really difficult or it can take a long time and so you know getting out of a bad such situ- a bad work situation or you know renegotiating a bad work situation it's not always feasible or it's not always like fast moving and so that's why at least in my talks, I like to talk about the things that you can do outside of your work environment um, because those are things that people generally have more control over. Um, because I, I know, I do accept that like not everyone can just be like, you know what, I'm quitting today and I'm going to find my dream job. Like I, yeah, I realize. Real, real, realistically, you need a job. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, absolutely. And so I think it's hardest when that job is the soul of you. and um, one of the jobs that I had it was very much drink the Kool-Aid environment and mm, Kool-Aid. everyone there was like <laughs> really into it. And it was, it's just, it's dangerous because your job is your identity is a, it's just slippery slope, right? Because in you at the end of the day don't necessarily have, like if the company gets sold, if you're, you know, if your job position changes, if, you know, slowly like your job description even changes and it's like all of a sudden your identity is changing because of this. And so I think and that's a color specialist now. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> for this job. What does that even mean? Enjoy. <laughs> yeah. So, so I think it was really cool being in an environment like that because everyone there was super passionate and yeah, really, really good at what they do. But it was also uh, just eye opening. I think I love what Brian said about how just different organizations like come with their own problems. And yes, so. <laughs> yes, definitely. Yeah, now, really. you talked about eggs on, on one basket. Um, what do you do besides make an omelet with those other eggs? Like, what do you like? She what? scuba dives with those eggs. She scuba I dives. Do. I was hearing about the scuba diving. Oh, cool. so you these eggs underwater. What goes on? So I just got back two weeks, two weeks ago, one week ago from Turks and Caicos uh, from a dive, a dive trip, and nice. the dive trips we do are liveaboards. So we, uh, oh, nice. we are hoity-toity divers who sneer <laughs> at resort. Yes, exactly. Who sneer at resort divers? So if you're like. Oh yeah, I've been diving and we're like, where? Like, <laughs> like because we we love to do live aboards. I got the iron oh man, super nerd. Let me show you this. Oh, yes. Uh I got the, <laughs> the iron diver medal. And they like yeah. actually had a ceremony wow. at the end of the week. Cause me and my husband, my friend who was on the trip, and my father-in-law, we were the only four on the boat who got it because we did all 27 dives that week. Oh, nice! <laughs> and that included like a 6 a.m. dive and like all of like all five Dang. night dives. Yeah. So and night dives are so much fun. Oh my gosh, you can like shine your light out into the abyss and see like a glimmer and like you know that's like a shark circling or like oh, oh yeah, that's that. awesome. <laughs> really <laughs> great. No, thank you. I, know. I freaking love it. Oh, I love it. I, I like to turn my yeah. light off and just like you know like soak up the darkness and you, you know you like can't see anything and then all of a sudden it's like and you die. <laughs> <laughs> And then you see the darkness. You yeah. not have that? You don't have any sense of like adventure where you like to do No, I, I dived in, in the Keys. I mean, I went diving in the Keys. I will it? not dive. Awesome. No. You will not dive? Like, I, period? No, I, I liked am totally it. afraid of that. I liked it, but I, I find um, it terrifying as well. But I, I, I like to do things that terrify me. Like, I've jumped, I've gone skydiving, for instance. He jumps in front of cars. And I jump in front of cars randomly. I, and I'm like, he, he drives with me, which is apparently oh frightening. He oh. is a, hor- a terrifying driver. Like, like super fast and hard on the brakes. Overly, he's just over, he's an offensive driver. Like, I NASCAR level offensive driver. I have way too much adrenaline all the time. I've only given <laughs> one bad Uber slash Lyft review to a driver. Oh, God. Frederick and is an Uber was, driver. It was. <laughs> In Orlando, and the dude was like listening to classical music, and mm-hmm. which is fine in and of itself. Bit sonata, I hear it. Cranked up like really high. We're talking like Beethoven, like. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, like that, well, and then he was like driving like a maniac, and oh. he would start like. That doesn't match. He would start. So, so, so I'm picturing Nicolas Cage in Moonlight. Um, what was that movie with Cher? 
<laughs> anyway. What? Did this happen in Nicolas Cage? Yeah, yeah. This is a Nicolas Cage movie you're describing to me. Where <laughs> is everything a Nicolas Cage movie is with, with with Sherry, and he's always going to the opera. Um, what is oh it with the uh, it's the pie, like a big pizza pie that's amore. Anyway, Cage we'll put a link Sharon? in the show notes. Oh. But that's that's a Nicolas Cage movie. <laughs> what you Sharon? Oh, Moonstruck? Moonstruck. Boom! Oh, no really? I don't remember. I have to watch that. I know. I know. I now everyone that. should watch it. Let us all go and watch the Moonstruck now. <laughs> no. So I want to kind of like change topics just because. Before I'm I change topics. No, before no. you change topics. Oh, okay. Time out before you change topics. I just want to say a great takeaway from what we talked about is do not put all your eggs in one basket. Don't go home. And drink five beers and watch um, uh, Dancing with the Stars watch and feel like you're going to kill yourself. <laughs> Go out there and try to find other hobbies or things of interest and try to diversify your ego, if, if you will, and, yeah. and put yourself in some other kind of areas that you find interesting. Yeah, it literally could be knitting, right? It doesn't have yeah. to be as expensive or scary as scuba diving. I'm so. going to start a side project <laughs> that needs to become Twitter or Facebook. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. That's what a lot of people are like. But. <laughs> But um, what I wanted to talk about, because I was super excited and stoked to uh, see, watch your YouTube videos. I love your YouTube channel. I love your personality on YouTube. Like, I remember there was one where you started talking and you did, like, an intro. And you're like, wait, did I, did I really say that? One, one second. Oh, yeah, I did say that. That's, <laughs> well, so I didn't even repeat it, it, which is great. <laughs> Love that. Oh, yeah. So I saw that in the show notes where you were wondering why I started that channel. And it was actually Dan yeah. Denny is the reason I started that oh, channel. Yeah. What? So I worked, circle. I worked at Code School as my first yeah. job. Uh, so back to college, I went to bar camp in Orlando, which is not a uh, bar. Well, it was at bars, but it was like foo bar camp. And people <gasps> just can sign up on a whiteboard to do a talk on a stage. And so I was in college and I was like, yeah, I want to give a talk. So I gave a talk and that's where I met Greg Pollock. And when I graduated, he texted me and was like, has anybody scooped you up yet? And I was like, nope, not yet. And he was like, come into the office. And so I came in and everyone was like, who are you? And I was like, I guess I work here now. So that was literally how I got hired as my first job. And Dan Denny was an incredible designer and is an incredible designer who worked at Coastal. What? Yeah, was, was, God rest <laughs> no, Dan is still alive and fine. <laughs> R.I.P. <laughs> Dan <laughs> Getty. <laughs> <laughs> but when I left Code School, because I, I loved teaching and I still love teaching, but I wanted to be, I have this like, I'm a, a pendulum and I swing back back and forth between like teaching and advocating that and, develop, and developing. <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> no. So I swing back and forth between being a developer and a teacher and advocate. And so I was like, mm. it's time to go. I need to, um, I've been out of, I think I was there for two or three years. I was like, I've been out of college for that long. I was like, I need to prove that I can develop. And so I got a, a full-time developer job and he gave me some advice on the way out the door. He was like, I, I want you to keep like, you know, the, your on-camera presence going. And I think a YouTube channel could be a great way to do that. And so um, that I feel bad to this day that I still don't like post as much. And I hate, I don't know if you guys have things like this. Twitter is another thing like this. I don't get joy out of Twitter, just guilt. Because I don't do it enough. It's like, it's one of those things in my life where I'm like. Really? Wait. Yeah. Wait, that, <laughs> I, I think go, it goes back, back to what you said with uh, one of your videos <laughs> no. where you talked about that you are an overachiever and you <laughs> have to uh, keep doing these things. And you said, and I'm, I'm quoting you and you could correct me, uh, oh, that yeah. you had this monster inside you that says, you could do this. You need to do it faster and quicker and learn these things. Don't you think that's coming from, from you? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, it absolutely is. But that monster is the reason that I'm going to rule the world one day. So, exactly. I, let it, yeah. so I let it live. Yeah, be <laughs> that monster. But no, do you guys have things like that where you're like, I know Instagram is supposed to give me joy, but really I just get guilt. <laughs> I don't know. I feel twit like lately, and I don't know how, if Fred. I mean, you clearly don't feel this way, but Fred, I wonder if Frederick feels this way. Uh, I just feel like all of them, like all of them, just feel so draining for me lately. Um, I don't know if it's just the current environment, um, but Twitter. Oh God, I feel, and Instagram the same way. Instagram made me mad because it drained my phone. I looked at my phone <laughs> and it was at, it was active in the background for seventeen oh, hours. That is to so Google. funny and like the perfect it, symbolism. It, it, it <laughs> used, no, it used seventeen percent of my battery. What is Instagram doing? <laughs> 
Well, I think if I go back to what you talked right. about earlier is I, I don't, when I partition my interest and my ego or, or self, whatever you want to call it, I don't put my, I don't invest into those things. Like I'm not looking for Instagram for um, satisfaction as far as like, oh, I enjoy using this. I look at that as a task and I, I accomplish that task and I'm, I, I find joy, joy in, in uh, accomplishing that task. I wish I knew what episode you it was. Have a- do you have a list yeah. then of like, like check emails, like check the Twitter? Yeah, like, I, I, like- I actually, I use things. So uh, things is one of my favorite apps yeah, and I'll just things. put, put stuff, I'll put things in things, sorry, <laughs> I'll put things in things and I'll, I'll just go through that list of what I want to accomplish for that day. It's, it's kind of like it's my bullet journal. And even if it's something as as like Twitter, like you'll put something like that on your list. Yeah, I'll put it inside of today. And like I said, I, I use it as my bullet journal and, and I'll just accomplish those tasks. And if I could get those done, that's great. Oh, okay. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember the episode uh, or even who the guest was, Frederick? We, we talked about actually this somewhat related to this topic and how Facebook and Twitter kind of, which – Perfect for you being on the psychology match <laughs> of how it affects, uh, what's it? Um, it basically satisfies oh, the hierarchy of need. What's it called? Oh, I can never oh. remember. Well, I, I think this remember. is when we talked to Charlie uh, and Marie. Was it? Did, yeah. What's it called? Mas, Maslow? Mas? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's something Maslow? like that. Maslow? What? It's, it's Maslow's right. M-A-S-L-O-W, Maslow. What you said. Yes, hierarchy of needs. And yeah. like how things and all those kind of satisfy those but really don't satisfy those yeah and and that affects us so much um and like it's weird how how you know i mean i i'll admit probably sometimes i'm the same as as you are where i get affected by it like i feel guilty or feel like i'm missing something i'm like uh and i do i do find myself almost all like Anytime I'm away from doing something, I'll pick up my, I'll be like, oh, well, let me, what's on, this, what's on my phone right now? What's, on, what's going on on Twitter? And I'm like, now I find myself I'm like, why am I doing this? Like, there's, there's nothing on here that really matters. But Frederick is next to me in the car. I could talk to him instead. Yeah. Um, no, I, on the should. dive trip, I didn't turn my yeah. phone, I didn't turn my phone on. Off? It was, <laughs> no, on. And it was blissful. Like, yeah. I, when I got back, I was like, I didn't miss you. <laughs> I, didn't miss you. I think using devices like the what is it, Brian? The light phone, like that's great. Yeah, the what phone? Light. light. Yeah, I don't know what that mean, is. It's essentially a phone that they they released a new one, and I uh, I they on Indigo they did a whole like sponsor thing for it, and it's called Light Phone Two. And what it is is it essentially removes. No Everything feet. that is not a phone. Like you oh, can no say, way. So it's like a phone yeah, and texting. Like a smartphone, like, which is funny to say oh, everything that's not a phone. No, It's still a smartphone, but there's just no feeds. Like you get texting, um, you get a phone, you get a map, but you're not getting Twitter. You're not getting Facebook. Like those things aren't in there. That's so I, funny how we're going backwards yeah. now. It was, it was <laughs> funny, we're going forwards. It was funny though how I called it a phone. <laughs> like everything that's not a phone. I'm like, no, wait. <laughs> wait. A computer. Smartphone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that's no, that's really interesting. I want to look this up though. It was an indigo, uh, you said? Yeah, and uh, we, there's a link down and then if you scroll down in our, okay. our doc, it's in the notes now. <laughs> and <laughs> we'll put you. that in the show notes for everybody too. Yeah. We're getting dangerously close, but uh, before we get wow. to uh, all of our other questions, uh, you know, uh, Brian's uh, segment, I just want to ask you a little bit about uh, uh, you are a Angular developer, if I'm correct, for yeah. advocate for uh, Kendo UI? I am, yes. Uh, so I that entails a lot of conferences, but also right now I'm working on like an Angular and Kendo video series because Kendo UI is a component library. And so I'm just teaching people how to essentially marry the two together if they're new to either one. And so um, it's been a lot of fun, honestly, being a developer advocate. I miss the, like my husband will rub it in and be like, look at all of my Jira tickets I have. And I'm like, nobody likes you. You're such a bragger, right? Like, so there's moments like that where I'm like, oh, I miss like implementing features. That's so silly, but I do. Um, but there's a huge part of me that um, just loves soaking up the ability to like write and teach. And actually like I get to program, but it's only for like towards those ends right now. And so it's just this season in my life is dedicated to that. And I, I really enjoy it. I'm also a GDE, which is Google Developer Expert, which means Google gave me a 
ticket that says I know things. <laughs> Dang, that's pretty they're, nice. They're not Did you get a cape with that? I feel like you should, yeah, like definitely should get a cape for that. I yeah, like when you walk like to their door, like somebody <laughs> should roll out a carpet like, oh, this way, ma'am. <laughs> no, I, I, uh, I definitely, I love, I love that like I got into that program because it, it's, I met a ton of cool people and I've actually like skyrocketed my own knowledge through that. But it's funny because it's like a Boolean, right? Like it's just, you're a GDE. It doesn't actually tell you what level you are. or And so everyone's like, you obviously know everything. And I'm like, should I accept Wait, there that? are levels to this? <laughs> well, I think if you have that, you could drop the junior like you were talking about in the uh, drop the junior series. I, I, I like how on there, I love how on their Google developer expert thing, there's a tab that's become an expert. <laughs> <laughs> Like if I follow all of these things, yeah, no, I'm going they to totally, be an expert. <laughs> they totally took that word. Like it's their word now, their branded word. Like expert is. Yeah. <laughs> it's Do you funny. walk in like to their <laughs> building with like some kind of like ostentatious like bravado? Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's excuse me, I'm an expert. <laughs> mimosa, I, I'm an expert. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, that's not a mimosa. That's a screwdriver. Uh, that's a screwdriver yeah was that on the show i don't think that was on no just so you know everybody a mimosa or no a screwdriver is a mixture of what orange vodka juice and vodka yes yeah. no oh. vodka and orange juice you did it wrong but, <laughs> it's no, definitely vodka, vodka first vodka <laughs> That's awesome. no, well, we, yeah. we are getting dangerously close to the end of the show um i know we had a ton of things to talk about um but we are so freaking sorry what? Oh, I don't. I can't even hear you, dogs. But we're we're super close there. So, Brian, I think it's time to go to the spotlight. It's the spotlight time. So I ask a group question, uh, and I'll you go, go first. last. I go first. You go last. Um, not you, Frederick goes next. Yeah, you will listen. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm actually going to go back just because I'm so excited that I want to mention it about something that was released. Uh, something cool that you've discovered. Uh, or some, it could be anything. It could be barbecue. It could be tech. It could be like I'm going back because I really want to mention this. And I'm super psyched about it. Sure. It is uh, uh, for me. It's Affinity Designer on the iPad. I'm so excited that it's finally on the iPad. I have been like just staring at the Twitter feed for months. Me like, are they? Have they released it yet? <laughs> um, because they teased it like a year ago and really awesome so i'm super excited that it's finally available i've been playing around with it it's it's cool to have like a full di like illustration tool just is this like sketch no it's like illustrator oh okay. so you can <laughs> create me. you can create svgs oh yeah yeah definitely yeah okay, cool. yeah, yeah you can import P photoshop files you there's symbols on there so yes in that sense it's like sketch there's you own like one of the massive ipads um i have the 10.5 ipad 42 inches have. 42 inches yes. <laughs> <laughs> 42 inch ipad uh, ipad expert i feel like the 12.9 is a little too i don't know i like the portability of like the 10.5 so mm. um so that's mine frederick what's something that you and want I'll, I'll preface that this could be anything we're yeah, talking just something about you right? share. yeah great so you know on a previous uh, episode I was prompted to, um, and maybe I could even say and employ the word inspired to learn how to create iPhone and Android ringtones by, oh, no. by a conversation. So Brian, if you do me oh a my favor, God, I'm excited. <laughs> Brian, if you do me a favor really quick and just call my phone and we'll, we'll Absolutely. I'll, I'll turn up the volume on my phone and maybe we'll hear a interesting oh ringtone. God. Super excited. <laughs> I know what this is. Go ahead, Brian. Call me up. I am calling you right now, Here's sir. My phone. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that is awesome! So uh, Janelle is not on the show today. She oh. had some work-related things that she had to do. She had some meetings in uh, another city, but so she was talking. We were talking about rather um, uh, creating iPhone uh, ringtones, and it just just came up and. Um, oh. you know, just joking around, and I was like, "Oh, I'm gonna create that." So I created a ringtone of Janelle's laughter, and uh, I'm going to find a way to put that on the uh, iTunes store. Yeah, so was... I, I found out that there's all these different hoops you have to jump through to become, uh, or rather, to sell.
sell your stuff. And there's there's a few different services that you could also use to sell your stuff on not only iTunes, but Android. So I'm, I'm doing that right now and I'm going to start selling ringtones. Oh, that's awesome. Now, just laughter ringtones? Well, just- that one was particularly of Janelle laughing and that, that came up so in a moment of levity oh, where we talked so about funny. saying like, everybody loves her laugh and we should make that into a yeah. ringtone but Last i started episode. yeah but i started architecting some different uh, musical tones and i'm um, <sighs> gonna start uh selling some ringtones see if uh, i can make a little bit of cash like that but either way i'm just doing it just because it's fun <laughs> Man, I feel like, yeah, that that's it. I mean, we could just, let's just, and this is the last episode. We've satisfied everything we need to do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Janelle, don't worry. If you're watching this, listening to this, I will tweet it out when it's available for people to purchase. I will tweet it out. <laughs> <laughs> How does she feel about you making moolah off of her gorgeous laugh? She, she loves cool it. it? <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I haven't got the go ahead from her, but just kind of my mind. She loves it. You're just going to be like, could you sign this? Yeah. <laughs> I'll give her a penny for every $10 I sell. So oh, we're good. Oh, my goodness. Yes. <laughs> your, your turn? Your my, turn. My turn. Okay. Uh, I have one tech-related one and one non-tech-related one. So uh, the tech-related one is um, in GRX. Yes, there is a course by Deborah Carrada that she released recently, and it's kick butt on Pluralsight. Um, it's actually called bum, 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 uh, Angular NGRX Getting Started. Super simple. But anyways, uh, amazing. Just released like this week, I think. And so that's my tech-related pick. And then my non-tech-related pick is Moonlighter. It's a game that I waited for like over a year to be released. It's like a, a dungeon crawler and it's a like pixel art game and it's super Ooh. sexy. It's incredible. It reminds me of like Zelda from the old days, but like better. It's just so gorgeous. Ooh, all right. Yeah. It's called Moonlighter because you do dungeons, you know, by night and you're getting loot. Um, and then and during the day you have a shop and you actually get to price your things and sell them oh. and people come in. But it's like, yeah, it's this little pixel what? art gorgeous game. So yeah, what is I love it? that. Moonlighter. Moonlighter. And that's for the iTunes store or anything else? So I know it is on Xbox. I believe it is also oh. on PC. I think on Steam. Uh, it's on Steam, yeah. It's on Steam. Awesome. Yes. So all right, we'll put a link to that in the show notes. Yeah. All right, we are at our lightning round before we start to close up. And oh. this lightning round. Right. Let's oh. prefix that we previously, this was called the rapid fire. Rapid and fire, which was thunder- a little bit too Chris Corey, and we thought we'd yeah. change it up. Plus, we're all, I was like, rant. thunder nerds, lightning. Come Chris on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> That's a term, show. just so you know. People say, <laughs> no, I've totally heard mean. that in every con- <laughs> conference I've been to. This is a little Chris Corey, don't you think? It is very nice. You're right. And that's how I was thinking. <laughs> oh, we'll so, you, Chris. Don't worry. So lightning round? Yeah. Lightning round. Pa, 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 lightning. <laughs> like Zeus. Is that how lightning Another sounds? stuff. That's how lightning sounds to me in my head. It's frightening. <laughs> so we asked a bunch of questions. You answer mm-hmm. really quickly. And cereal or toast? Toast. Favorite cartoon as a kid? My Little Pony. Hot dog or hamburger? Hot dog with no bun. <laughs> Why do ghosts ride elevators? Oh, probably because they don't have legs. <laughs> to raise their spirits, bro. No! Uh, oh, that was a good one. <laughs> that was a bad one. That was good. One. I, that was hilarious. I love dad jokes. Okay. <laughs> have you ever jumped out of a plane? Yes. Yes. It's louder than you think, isn't it? Yeah, cold too. I'm like, why is it so loud? Why is air so loud? It was very weird. <laughs> Favorite programming language. Oh, JavaScript, but like the old JavaScript, not the new one where we're trying to force types on it. <laughs> so you like TypeScript, I think. <laughs> uh, worst smell ever? Um, The garbage can behind Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> Specifically Starbucks. Oh, it's like milk, milk, rotting milk. Just, just that's it. Like just rotting. Yeah. <laughs> where do you want to live? Ultimately. Ooh, ultimately, I want to live on a boat. I want to give up all my worldly possessions except for the things that can fit on a boat and like sail around. Oh, and sail around all, all over the world. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is the movie you watch when you're feeling sick? 
like your go to. Winnie the Pooh. Oh, which one? Aww, adorable. I well, I have like the old school one and the yes. new cartoon one, but like the old school one obviously has been watched a lot more times. You yeah. loving the trailer of the new one? I was not wait. Oh my gosh. And my freaking in-laws are like, they're here in town with me and they like go to see movies with us. And they're like, yeah, we're not going to see it. And I'm like, I don't know you. I don't, I don't know you. <laughs> that was my question, Brian. Go ahead. You're next. Coffee or tea? Coffee. 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 <laughs> what language do you want to learn that you do not learn that, that you don't know? C sharp. <laughs> Sharp. Oh, okay. Nice. I, I want to know what your coffee drink of choice is. Since you, we've talked about this numerous times, I'm curious what your drink is. Uh, I, so I drink black coffee now, but I think it's because I don't have anyone to make it for me. <laughs> so it's easy. Uh, okay. I'm going to give you, this is French, French press. So heat your water. Okay. People are going to make fun of me. Heat your water to 155 ish degrees. Okay. Right. Okay. Uh, Cause you want too hot. Cause you want to burn, burn the grounds. Obviously you ground them. Or I would recommend grounding them, like grinding them. Like buying them pre, don't buy them pre made, pre ground. Like it just reminds me, my sister was just in a wedding beans. and they bought these like twenty bags because they were making coffee for the wedding she was yeah. in, and they didn't grind it. And so the like the bridesmaid and the bride got out hammers and they started like smashing. Yeah, that will work. Like you could smash it. <laughs> you could definitely smash it. But, but okay, so yeah. you boil the water, mm -hmm. you grind, you grind the beans, you put, mm -hmm. uh, it, you, you know. A certain amount depending upon it depends upon the size of French press, but we can talk about that out later if you need to. Then a pinch of salt, Ooh. a little bit of cinnamon. The okay. salt reduces the bitterness of the coffee, and then you pour the hot water over it, let it set for like five minutes because oxidation oxidation occurs in the grounds, and you'll see like a little like 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 poof on top, kind of like a, a beer, you know, how beer foam on top. And then you stir it, let it set again for a few minutes, push it down. Excellent coffee. Nice. Thanks, uh, Coffee Dr. Phil. <laughs> coffee Favorite Dr. My Little Pony. <laughs> why? Oh, Pinkie Pie, because she's my spirit animal. Um, oh, that's yeah. adorable. Tell me about Pinkie Pie. No, Pinkie Pie <laughs> is like, she has these balloons as her cutie mark, and she's all about um, parties, which, you know, you, you think like, not like this kind of parties, but like being like, friendship is magic, everyone, right? It's so, like being with friends and like, she's super energetic. I have ADHD, and so I actually can't control my energy, and it's like a curse sometimes. Sometimes I'll like stand up from my computer and go over and like shake my husband, and he's like, I know, it's okay. And I'm like, Wow! Like, because there's just so much energy. That's why I really like Pinkie Pie. It is not a curse. You you are an amazing human being. I'm very happy to be talk, able to talk to you. Well, thank you. Yeah. And I, you're making me want a mimosa. I know it's not a mimosa, but you're making me want a mimosa. <laughs> there's no reason you couldn't have a mimosa right now. <laughs> you deserve it. Have one. A mimosa. <laughs> That's so we are looking at my drink choice. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> we're at the end of our rapid fire, and we're about to close up. So. I'd like to ask you if you have any kind of final words, um, any thoughts, anything, any kind of wisdom that you would like to bestow upon our audience. Deep wisdom. Yeah. Deep, Deep wisdom. wisdom. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think one of the like wisest things that I've heard lately that have really like left an impact and like made me think well was um, if you're feeling bad about something in your life, look at what you haven't earned and go and earn it. So that is my knowledge bomb and uh, it has helped me at least. So yeah, earn it. <laughs> I like that, yeah, take ownership. of if, if you are seeking something, don't just cry about it, but actually go out and seek it and, and try to earn it, take take control of your life. Yeah, so yeah, that is that is all I have. Thank you guys so much, this was really fun. Thank you, I, I heard the <laughs> mic drop after you said that. Like, I, know, I noticed yeah, that. You one of those, like, I know it's on a, um, a stand, but did you? She tore it Not off, I saw it. <laughs> oh man, yeah, I should tear it off and just throw it, throw it at a mirror and watch it break and have seven years bad luck, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, you guys are yeah. the best. Thank oh, you you're so this. awesome. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> and uh, how can how can people reach you, find out more about you? What's some websites, URLs, mm. Twitters, and all that good stuff? Yeah. That people so, type in their keyboards. So at Alyssa Nichol, my first and last name is my Twitter handle, and my DM is always open if you ever need to chat or have questions. And they don't have to be just angular questions. Um, my little but, pony questions are accepted. They are. I've actually been told by some hardcore bronies on the internet 
nuts that I am an honorary brony, even though I'm not a guy. So I was like super honored by that. I was like, thank you so much. Dang. Yeah, because you know, like yeah, bronies, like you know, guys yeah. that like ponies. Okay, anyway. I yeah. think I got that. <laughs> Brian, your cutie mark, what would it be? Yeah, what, 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 what my cutie my, mark? my cutie mark would be a bat, Brian. Definitely a, a cute penguin. I love penguins. A penguin? Would I love you penguins. <laughs> Don't laugh. Penguin. Brian's cold inside, like oh, a penguin. It makes hey, they like they look cute little wobble around things. He's cold what inside, like a, slimy cold. Don't don't fun fun like a penguin, slimy and cold. Don't make fun of my spirit animal. Don't make fun of Brian. That's my spirit animal. Oh, you guys should take the cold and dead inside, no, like a penguin. But penguins are. For real. I'm I'm extremely awkward, like walking and land, what? running. I run into things randomly. Penguins he does. I've seen him do it. You when must I, be a pair. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. when I get in the water, though, like it's, it's like I'm a fish. I'm like, I love oh, it. the water. Like you're like a fish. Like, like, yeah, yeah. I actually, I'm like, I'm like, the, like Little Mermaid. I get, I get a tail and everything. <laughs> I'm like Ursula, so I, that makes oh, sense. Ursula. I got the tentacles. <laughs> oh. hey, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to our channel, or else I'll curse you and take away your legs. Um, thanks, big hey, guys. Uh, toodles and noodles.